this is only the second time that I'm, I'm, I'm part of a service where there's people and <laughs> I've been preaching into a camera for the last, uh, what, almost coming to a year now. <laughs> yeah, so it's nice to be with you. Thanks, uh, Pastor Alan, uh, Richard, you know, leaders of the church. Uh, it's, a, it's a joy for me again to come and share with you. So, uh, Pastor Alan t- told me on the phone that you are starting a series called Living as Promised Land People. And, uh, he, he, and, and he asked me to, to share, to speak about how can we lead, how can we serve, how can we, you know, where, how, can you, how can you be the kind of, I suppose by extension, father that God has called you to be, the husband, the witness in the marketplace, whatever role that God has put on your heart to do, how do we do it over the long haul? And after he described to me, and then he, he said like, you know, because Pastor Vincent, you have, been, you have lived a very long life, you know, like, he's just trying to tell me I'm very old, lah, you know, and been through a lot of ups and downs and all that. I said, yeah, I've been, a, I've been through a few, you know. And, uh, and it's something close to my heart. Um, it's something that I, I learned as much from the Bible as from my own experience as well. And, you know, you talk about promised land. Uh, if you look at the scriptures, the people of God, I think it was... It was actually harder for them to follow God when they were in the promised land. In a sense, it was easier to be in the desert because in the desert, you have no choice but to believe in God, right? You have so little. I mean, you just have a pair of sandals, that's all. Promised land, uh, you you have so many pairs of sandals. Uh, I can never understand like, okay, this is something between my wife, now my daughter as well. Like, why do you need 10 pairs of shoes? And then now, now, later I found 10 pairs is not a lot. <laughs> I remember my younger days uh, when we first got married. Uh, that one time, my wife, six pairs of shoes. I said, You're like Ferdinand Marcos. I uh, know the wife of, of uh, what's her name? Imelda Marcos, you know? <laughs> okay, maybe they're too young to know who is Imelda Marcos. Actually, it's much harder. Uh, tough times, even like this, sometimes. Depends on your orientation, depends on your relationship with God, uh, can be a time where you can actually trust God. However, when it's prolonged is when it's hard. If it's just a crisis over a few weeks, even a few months perhaps, but what if it's over years, you know? And I think actually good times can also be very challenging. You can be complacent, you can, you know, kind of go into a slumber. So whatever the state of life you may be in, Whatever situation you may be in, the question is how can we be leading out of a sense of rest? In other words, how can we go on the long haul? And I'd like to share with you, I think there are many principles, um, but there's one that has helped me probably more than any other truth I've learned in the Bible. And that is the Sabbath principle. All right? And the practice of the Sabbath. Uh, I remember when I first went to Australia, I was 18 years old. I went, I went to school there. Um, I, was, I grew up as a Malaysian, so I didn't have to do NS. So I went there, 19, I went to university. And uh, so when I first went there, I did year 12, which is the pre-university year. Uh, and I was determined to do well. So I remember I was studying Monday to Sunday nonstop, okay? Uh, Monday to Friday school, Saturday, Sunday, I put in many hours day to night, day to night. I I really wanted to do well. And after about four, five months, I began to realize that my mind was slowing down. I didn't know why, but I was still pushing on, right? My parents worked so hard and it cost so much money to send me here. I I wanted to work very hard. And it came to a point where I still remember, it was a long time ago, I could literally be staring at a page on my book for like half an hour and I'll be reading it over and over and over again. Nothing gets into my brain. All right? I mean, I'm not brilliant, but I'm not stupid either. All right? And, and I don't know what's happened to me. I wasn't sick. Um, I, physically, I was feeling well. Okay, I was feeling okay. So something makes me say that, okay, let's take a break. So I went to see a friend of mine studying in another university, stayed over the weekend with him. Uh, at the time, I wasn't a Christian. He was a Christian, brought me to church and all that. So that was fun. So then I came back Sunday night, had a good sleep. And Monday morning when I woke up, went to school, my mind was working again. I did not understand why. But I knew from experience that, you know what? I need to take a bit of a break sometimes, okay? 
much later in life, much later even in my Christian walk, I begin to learn that there's such a thing as the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do no any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Amen. The Lord bless the reading of His Word. Be seated, please. This is um, one of the commandments. It is the fourth commandment. All right, one of the Ten Commandments that God gave to the people of Israel on Mount Sinai. Um, we want to see how the practice of Sabbath or the Sabbath principle, if you like, uh, is so important for our well-being. It's so important for us so that we can, we can function at, at the maximum capacity or we can function well uh, according to God's purpose and the way He has created us. And I can guarantee you that this is one of the key principles, key things to learn for you to not just function well in the short term, but over the long haul. And there are three ways that the Sabbath uh, enables us to live as promised land people, living well in accordance to God's purpose. All right? Three ways. And uh, these three ways actually touches us in our, the three components, if you like, of our being, our spirit, our body, and our soul. Now, the Bible tells us that we are tripartite, tripartite being. There are three components in us, okay? We are created in the image of God. God is Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are created in His image. We are not three person in one, not the same as God, but we do have body, soul, and spirit, right? For example, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 tells us, if you will just show it on the slide, please. Paul writing to the church in Thessalonica said, And now, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole, what? Say together with me, spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul was saying that I want your entire being to be kept blameless as you wait for the Lord's return. And he said, your entire being is made up of spirit, soul, and body, okay? So I learned from the Bible that I'm actually a spirit, I have a soul, and I live in a physical body. My spirit is the, is the, be, the part of me that connects with God. So before I'm saved, my spirit is dead. But when I repent and put my faith in Jesus, my spirit comes alive. That's why the Bible says that you have come alive in Christ. What do you mean come alive? I've always been alive all these years. No, my spirit was dead. All right? We are born spiritually dead. But when I come to know Jesus at the age of 18, 19, my spirit comes alive and I begin to connect with God. I begin to be able to understand the Bible and hear His voice and so on. Then I have a soul. The soul is made up of the mind, the emotions and the will. Okay, I won't go into a lot of details, but uh, that's a part of me. That, that's, that's my feelings, my, how I make decisions is, is my soul. And then I live in a body. All right? I have, you and I have a physical body. And by the way, this body, we will continue to live in the physical body for all of eternity. You realize that, right? But of course, in the future, we have a resurrected body. Okay? So we are tripartite beings, spirit, soul, and body. And we want to see how the, the Sabbath can uh, renew our spirit, can also you, you know, uh, affect our, our body and our soul. So firstly, renewing our spirit. As I've said, the Sabbath was, uh, is the fourth commandment. And it's amazing that this commandment is given to the people of Israel. They came out of Egypt... This is a whole generation that knows nothing but slavery. In fact, they've been there some 400 years already. They are like how many generations slaves, right? They have no concept of nationhood. They have no concept of society. They have no concept of human resource uh, laws. <laughs> they have no concept of nothing. They were just slaves. And what do you do as slaves? You obey your masters. You don't ask any question, right? 
You wake up in the morning, you go out there, build the pyramids or whatever in Egypt, and uh, that's it. And generation after generation after generation, they, 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 they went through that. But when they came out, God wanted to mold them into a people. God says, you are going to be my light. You are going to be the prototype of my kingdom. You are going to be light of the world. You are going to show the world what a society will look like if you live fully under my rule, if I am your sovereign king. All right. So amazing, God would choose a bunch of slaves, not the elites of the land, okay? That, that, and that's God's way, right? He chose, I mean, in those days, the scums of the earth, slaves. And He gave them the laws, the Ten Commandments, but there were another, another 603 laws, all right? Total 613 laws given to them. But the Ten Commandments, one of them is the Sabbath. We just read it a while ago. You know, it's, it's in the same list of things that God tells us not to do as do not murder, do not steal, do not tell lies, do not bear false witnesses, do not worship idols, and so on. Do not take God's name in vain. All this whole thing, right? Now, if I ask you, have you murdered someone? No. You think stealing is wrong? No. You think lying is wrong? Uh, no, yes, I mean, sorry. <laughs> yes. Lying is wrong? Yes. What about breaking the Sabbath? We pastors are the worst, you know. We break the Sabbath every week. Like. <laughs> and I didn't know that. That's why when I first started school in Australia, I, I was breaking the Sabbath. I didn't know that, of course. I discovered it by accident. Now I know much better. And I put it into practice in my quite a many years of pastoral ministry now. And more than anything else, you know, uh, the Sabbath principle has really kept me going. And I trust by God's grace will keep me going for many more years. So the Sabbath is given to us for our well-being. Unfortunately, during the, by the time of Christ, the religious leaders of the Jewish society has become so legalistic. All right, it's, it's like they come up with a whole list of rules and regulations. What is work, what is not work. You know, so for example, on Sabbath day, which is Saturday, which is Friday evening to Saturday evening, you cannot walk more than one, um, one mile or one kilometre. I forgot what's the measurement, okay? So if you, want to, if you want to pick up something, buy something, all right, and that thing is two miles away, you cannot do that. But you can walk one mile, and then the other person, another person walk one mile for you. So, for example, I want, to, I want to pass something to Pastor Alan, right? He lives two miles away from me. I can walk one mile. Then I have to rest you the next day. Then another person pick up the thing and walk one more mile to Alan's place. You see, we didn't break the law, you know? In fact, I heard this one. I don't know how far it's true. I've never done the research that you cannot eat eggs laid by the chicken on Sabbath day. <laughs> because it's work. <laughs> Till today, by the way, um, I mean, bless their hearts. They are very sincere. Religious Orthodox Jews still practice this. A couple of years ago, my wife and I was in Israel. Uh, we led a group and then we stayed on for a few days. So we went up one of the mountain area at uh, Mispah Ramon and I went there to take some pictures. So we were up there and, and, and uh, it was a very nice scene. So I wanted to ask, I saw a Jewish young man walking towards us. He looks like he's in his 20. So I, I went up to him and I said, could you take a picture for me and my wife? They said, no, no, no. Shabbat, Shabbat. No, 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 Shabbat. Then I straight away understood, you know, that it's Sabbath day for him. He cannot take my handphone and click because that is work. All right? Now, I totally respect that, by the way, okay? And, uh, you know, he, he meant it well. He meant it with all his heart. And in his own ways, he, he meant it to revere God. But in the Jesus time, uh, it went a bit haywire, all right? That's why Jesus had to come and teach them that the Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath, all right? So we want to recapture that. Don't throw it out because it's part of the Ten Commandments. You won't say that, no, 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 it doesn't apply to us anymore. You know, now I can murder, I can kill, I can, I can have images, you know, of idols. No, it's one of the Ten Commandments, okay? Just that now we've got to get back to the spirit of it, understand that it is actually meant for our good. And the first way that it keeps us refreshed, it keeps us strong, it renews us, is 
by renewing our spirit, okay, our spirit man, the part of our being that relates to God, okay? So, it says here that you are to remember the Sabbath day. Yeah, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Now, the word remember there is not simply not to forget, all right? Put it down on your notes, no. Remember that actually means you are to recall with deep affection and worship to God. It is to, to recall God's goodness. Recall who God is. You know, you study the names of God. Each of these names tell us about a character of God. You know, Pastor Ellen said there are more than 50 names. In fact, <laughs> I don't think the list is ever long enough, all right? But there's so many things about God, even if God revealed to us, our human mind cannot comprehend. So whatever He tells us, enough for us to chew on for the rest of our lives already. You know, there's just so much about God. But each of these reflect one aspect of the character of God, okay? So we are to remember who God is. We are to remember His works, all right, that we read in the Bible. We are to remember His works in our lives. One of the things that keeps me going is to recall how God has led me so far. Can I have an amen for that? You read the Psalms, it's a constant exhortation. Remember God. You know, remember how He provided for you in the wilderness. Remember how He, by His mighty hand, brought you out of Egypt. Remember. Why is it they have to remember? Because they are facing a very big problem right now. And they look at it, it's that I'm not sure if I can survive this. I'm not sure if I can survive this COVID-19 situation. Well, remember how God brought you to salvation. Remember how God saved you. Remember how God provided for you, you know, time and again. Maybe right now you're in a difficult financial situation and you look at it, it's like, Wow, some more recession. This is bad, you know. Like, wow, so many things going haywire. One of the things that will lift up your spirit is to remember, okay? Remember what God done. Don't remember all the bad things, huh? Don't remember all your mistakes. Don't remember, you know. Uh, and, and by the way, the way to drive out ne negative thoughts, uh, you know, negative thoughts often come to our mind, right? I have what happened what this person say, well, my own mistakes, my own sin. It's not to try to drive out those thoughts. The more you try to drive out those thoughts, the more you focus on them, the worse you get. Are you following me? The way to drive out those thoughts is to fill your minds with good thoughts. Amen? That's the biblical way. That's the Christian practice, the Christian tradition that, by the way, came from the Jewish people as well. So when we fill our minds with the Word of God, which basically tells us who God is and he, the way He works, fill our mind with remembering God's goodness, fill our minds with the character of God and all this, you know what? It will drive out all the negative thoughts. Okay, so that's what it means to remember and that's how it actually refreshes or renew our spirit. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. Do I have it up on the... Yes, I do. Okay, so I'm just going to look at a couple of selected uh, passages. This is a whole passage about remembering the Lord your God. Now, rem uh, God led them through the wilderness. Why 40 years? Because the generation, the earlier generation, did not believe God. They sent spies and they saw giants. They came back and said, we are like grasshoppers. We ain't going no in there, except for two, right? Say, no, let's trust God, but ten. Uh, say, no, okay? So, ten versus two, majority one, okay? Maybe they were democracy. That's why democracy is not God's way of running things. <laughs> it's theocracy, by the way. So, and, 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 and then God said, okay, you don't want to go in, never mind, I'll let you all die in the desert. That was actually what happened. But God says, I'll raise up the next generation, okay? And he did, the Joshua generation. And for 40 years, basically, God was preparing them for the promised land. Why? Because, one of the reasons is this. When they enter the promised land, they would be, it's a land filled with milk and honey. They're going to experience abundance like they've never experienced before. 
not even in their distant memory, 400 years in Egypt, they were slaves. It's a land where the grapes are so big, when they carry, it's like you need two men to carry just one cluster of grapes. And God knew. Does, did God want to bless them? Of course. God wanted to bless them with milk and honey, flowing, abundant supply. But God knew that if your heart is not ready, and I provide you that milk and honey, it's going to destroy you. So, for example, in Deuteronomy 8, it says here, take care lest you forget the Lord. Forget the Lord what? After you have entered the promised land, okay? By not keeping His commandments and His rules and His statutes, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them, where? In the promised land. In Egypt, they don't have their houses. In the desert, they don't build houses. Only when they enter the promised land, they will build houses, big houses, nice houses, land flowing in milk and honey. You say, does God want them to have them? Yes. But He says, when you have them, I want you to remember, take care. And when your herds and flocks multiply, your silver and gold is multiplied, that all that you have is multiplied, what? That your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And then I just move forward to verse 17. Beware lest you say in your heart. <laughs> so relevant for us in Singapore. My power, my might, my skills, my education, my hard work is what have gotten me this wealth. He said, you shall remember the Lord your God for it is He who gives you the power to get wealth that He may confirm His covenant that He swore to your fathers as it is this day. Hallelujah. So yes, God wants you to experience His abundant provision in the promised land. But we can easily forget Him. And the danger is this. When we forget Him, good times may be still okay. Lah, huh? Even then, it's very dangerous. Because when we take things for granted, that's when we can backslide, we slip into sin and we drift away from God. And then once you're drifted away from God, something bad happens, you cannot take it. You fall apart. You've got nothing to hold on to. And God doesn't want you to be in that place. I've seen so many people and I myself have gone through patches like this that where I was precariously <laughs> near the edge. I could, have, I could have fallen over myself. So it can happen to any one of us. And in good, good times as well as bad times, we need to remember. How do we do that? Well, there are many ways to do it. I want to give you one example. One which I'm glad. I think you have a daily Bible reading. Is that right, Pastor Ellen? You're reading the prophets or whatever? Yes. Whatever program that you may use. Sisters and brothers, one of the most important and useful spiritual discipline you can cultivate, you can encourage each other to cultivate. For those of you who have children, encourage your children to cultivate is the discipline of daily devotion with the Lord. I don't like the word discipline. Okay, I'll call it something else. Spiritual habit. I don't like the word habit. I can't help you already. <laughs> Survey studies, and my own pastoral experience anecdotally have shown without a shadow of doubt for me that the Christian who has developed a habit, discipline, practice of daily time with the Lord is the one that spiritually can grow most over the long haul. Are you following me? All right? And it's something you have to practice. You have to cultivate, Okay? I mean, I can preach a whole sermon about that. But this is so important. And this daily time with the Lord, one of the most important things is to remember the Lord. Remember His goodness. Remember what He has done all the way back in the Old Testament days with the Jewish, with the Israelites and, and into the time of Jesus. And I, I so often, I just take time to just recall. Like this past year is so crazy, right? I mean, we move into, your, some of you know that your church kindly let us use your place on Sunday morning. We were so happy. We settled down here. Within six months, COVID-19 hit. <laughs> Boom. Like everything went a bit haywire, you know. So it can be very disorientating to say the least. But you know what? 
we remember how God provided each step of the way. All right, and and now we are not even sure <laughs> what's going to happen next for us. But I'm I'm really not too worried because I have seen how God has provided. You remember, remember, remember. That's how you renew your spirit. And by the way, do it on a daily basis. Okay, number two. Oh, let me make just one more comment about this. Uh, when I say daily devotion, God has created us to function in, in a rhythm, in a weekly rhythm, seven days. I'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, that's how we are created. That's why I say six days work, one day rest. So applying to daily devotion, what if I miss a couple of days here and there? Well, try not to, but sometimes it happens. That's okay. So long in a given week, you spend enough time reading the Bible, praying, quiet time, devotion, call it what you want with the Lord, that's fine. Are you following me? So don't beat yourself up if you miss one or two days, all right? There are some weeks I'm, I'm just so busy, so many things happen. Boy, I, I only manage four days a week. That's okay. And that's when especially on my off day, for me it's Monday, for you, it's another day. It could be Saturday or Sunday, all right? Uh, I spend more time, all right? I spend proportionally more time. It's like to catch up the last few days that I missed out. So you must think in terms of one week, okay? All right, so let me move on. Secondly, it is to rest our bodies. Rest are not so fast. That's point number two. Rest our bodies, okay? Now, our body is created to function in a rhythm, a daily rhythm, not just our body, uh, our whole being, body, soul, and spirit, daily rhythm, 24 hours, weekly rhythm, six days work, one day rest, monthly rhythm, okay, I, I don't have time to talk about some of this, and yearly rhythm as well. And biblically speaking, the feast of the Lord, the seven feasts, especially the three major feasts, uh, kind of punctuate the annual rhythm, okay? So, but that's another story for another time. But coming back to a weekly rhythm, we are told that the rhythm we are to engage in is six days work, one day rest. Six days work, one day rest. Until you hit 55 when you get your CPF, is it? <laughs> oh, okay, until you hit 65 like, when you get your CPF live. Like. No, until you die. See, wow, Pastor Vincent, you're worse than Minister of Manpower. Leh. Must make me want until I die. No, listen to me. There's no such thing as retirement in the Bible. So those of you who are planning to retire by 50 years old, make enough money so I can play golf every day, I can travel around the world every day. Today, I'm going to show you from the Bible, that's a stupid idea. <laughs> Okay, this is the last time you're going to invite me to preach. Never mind. <laughs> There's no such thing as retirement in the Bible. However, what you do at different stages of your life will change. All right? I mean, I've been a senior pastor for many years. I don't think I want to do that until I die. Okay? I think there would come a time where there will no one be my role. But does it mean I do nothing from then on? No. I still do six days work, one day rest. But I may not play the senior pastor's role or may play... You, you, you get my point? You can even uh, be a volunteer, okay? So I always encourage... That's why I'm very happy years ago when I, when I saw the government and they are still doing it today even more, encouraging older folks to continue to work. Okay, it's not just good for the economy. It's good for your well-being, all right? Because work has intrinsic value. Work is not an afterthought, all right? Just that work become corrupted because of the fall of man, but work has intrinsic value. It gives you a sense of purpose. Okay? Now again, what you do at different stages of life can be different. That's fine. Okay? You probably do lighter work, not so strenuous later stage of life. Uh, but do continue to be engaged. Do continue to work. Forget about the word retirement. Okay? Just change a new set of tires and keep going. All right? That's the way God wants us to be. So Sabbath is for our well-being. Now Sabbath, the word means to cease. Cease from what? Cease from doing work that is for the purpose of accomplishment. Okay, let me say that again. It is to cease from doing work for the purpose of accomplishment. Uh, uh, what do you call that? Accomplishment. 
Uh, so preparing a sermon, studying the Bible is work for me. It's hard work for me. I enjoy it, but it still work for me. All right? But maybe for you, your off day, while well, you spend the whole day reading the Bible, studying the Bible, it's not work for you. Are you following me? And what's important is that uh, you must guard it. You, on your Sabbath day, and by the way, the Jewish people is Saturday till today. But you read in the book of Acts, all right, some, uh, halfway through, the Christians began to have their day of worship, day of rest uh, on Sunday. And the Bible never tells us why they switched from Saturday to Sunday. And it tells me that it is, the day is not important. Okay, Maybe because Sunday is resurrection day. Uh, Jesus resurrected on a Sunday, so maybe they switched. I don't know. Or maybe it could be that they were good Jews, so they were still practicing the Jewish thing. And then so Sunday, they start to practice Christian thing. Could be, could be the transition. I don't really know. But the point here is that whether it's Saturday, Sunday, for me, it's Monday. All right. So I cannot insist it's Sunday or even Saturday. If Saturday is Sabbath day, then every Saturday, Pastor Ellen and I are sinning against God. All right? So we're not. So for me, it's Monday. So you have to find your day, and it has to be 24 hours. So you can actually start Saturday afternoon till Sunday afternoon as well. You follow what I'm saying? Actually, better to be one day. But it can be flexible. Don't have to be legalistic about it. The point here is that in a given week, take one day off. And during that day, do something different. If you are a professional basketball player on the day of rest, don't go and play basketball. All right? But I'm not. So maybe on my off day, I can play basketball. You follow what I'm trying to say? So do something very different. Um, by the way, it says here also that it is for our domestic helpers, it is for our foreign workers. Okay? And uh, we are getting a lot more. Uh, awareness these days uh, for, because of COVID-19. It is a time for your body to rest. Physically, literally to rest. All right? It is a time for you to catch up with your sleep. Um, I can say a whole lot more about this, but just a quick point. Sleep is so important. How many hours of sleep do you think we need, our body needs, the way God has created us? Huh? Twelve, ah! Yo! <laughs> wow. Not quite there, lah, but, but I like that thought. I like the thought. How many hours? Seven? Yeah. Well, I once listened to a, a, a psychiatrist uh, and he was showing us all the research and all that. He said nine hours, okay? Yeah. But okay, again, I, I find that eight hours is good enough for me. Uh, and I think generally it's good enough. Sleep is so important, all right? You know the physical, you know, it's where your body rejuvenates and all that. And, and if you're not sleeping enough, that's one of the worst things you can do to yourself, to your body. Because a lot of things in your body, your body have a natural way of renewing, healing. You just need to rest, Okay. I know insomnia is a big problem these days. I'm fully aware of that, okay? But it's something, please take note. If you have to do more research and study into it, please do so, okay? I, I, by God's grace, by and large, I sleep quite well. So I thank God. That's maybe one of the reasons why I've been able to last so long. <laughs> I remember when my kid was very young, my son, little baby, you know, and uh, then there was, uh, after a few months, my wife was very tired because she used to wake up at night and all that. So, you know, I'm a godly husband. You know what I'm saying? Godly father, you know? I mean, so I'm going to set example. By then I was a pastor already. I must set example for my church members. So the one night I told my wife, dear, you sleep tonight, you sleep, don't worry. Because the baby was in another room, you know? So I said, tonight you, you sleep, I will go and sleep in the same room as the baby. And the night before I slept, I prayed, God, I prayed that he will sleep throughout the night. I fell asleep. Eight hours later, I woke up. He was still asleep. Hallelujah! God answered my prayer. Then I, over breakfast, I told my wife, dear, God answered my prayer. No way, me, my son, no? Slept through the night. You said, slap your head. Ah. <laughs> he cried so loud. I woke up three times. Ah. He was screaming away. Ah. I have to attend to him. You slept right through. Ah. <laughs> then I showed my wife from the, from the book of Psalms, I believe, God grants sleep to those he loves. <laughs> God loves me a lot. Lah. But joke aside, lah, 
it's so important, you know. It really is very important. By the way, you know the Jewish day uh, starts in the evening, ends in the evening, next, next day evening, according to the Bible, all right? That's why their Shabbat starts in the evening, next day. And it's a lovely, lovely uh, a thought because your day starts with time with your family. Have a meal with your family, time with your loved ones, followed by eight hours of sleep. And after you have time with your family, after you have eight hours of sleep, now you do some work. You start in the next day morning, you work. Your last one third of the day, you work. The first two third, time with loved ones and time to rest. These days, uh, we all work 18 hours. <laughs> then we slept three hours. <laughs> then we got no time for our family. No wonder we are falling apart. No wonder even though Singapore is blessed, we are in a promised land in some ways and yet, we are finding it such a stressful time. Okay, let me move on to the last point. Thirdly, it, it is to refresh our souls. So the Shabbat, which is a day of rest in a week, whatever day that may be for you, think of it of a, as a 24-hour period. All right? And try to stick to it as much as possible. Don't have to be legalistic. I usually don't do any ministry work on Monday. But once in a while, if it's something urgent, I can still respond to the need. But then I might just take Tuesday or Wednesday off. Okay? Practice that. And by the way, every one of us, including homemakers. So husbands, don't come home and say, wow, you're so lucky. You know, I work whole day, you stay home at home the whole day. Okay, maybe nowadays you also stay home. You know actually it's very tough, right? So those of you, are, I think one of the things I did for my wife that she thanked me to today is that I make sure that she also have a day off, you know. Uh, because if she don't, I will be in trouble as well anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, it is to refresh our souls, our emotions, our mind, our will. I find personally for me, if I go on a stretch without taking a day off, for three weeks, sometimes two to three weeks, sometimes stretch to four weeks. If I don't, like Monday, I'm also going bang, 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 doing ministry and all that, right? After about three to four weeks, I feel like the spirit of Prophet Amos come upon me. One, I feel like I want to score somebody. <laughs> I want to pronounce hellfire, you know. I want to call judgment on the people, including my church members. Now I feel like, you know, I start to feel really grouchy. And in the past, I never know why. Pastor, this Sunday you preach, wow, very fierce. Huh? <laughs> but doesn't feel like the Spirit of God. <laughs> because last three weeks, I didn't take a break. It's true, happened to me so many times. But when take, I take a day off, and sometimes if I'm really tired, I take a couple of days. After that, Spirit of Amos, Prophet Amos lift. <laughs> I start to feel very different. I can look at the same thing. I can look at the same issue. I can look at the same person. I feel different. Are you following me? So this is very, very important. And to refresh our soul is a time when we are being reminded, when we take time for healing of our emotions, where we take time to let our will, the will is the decision-making part of us, have rest, align with God, you follow, tune into the Word of God, the Spirit of God. Uh, time to just, you know, sometimes I would just spend literally like an hour sitting in my study. I have a room where I put a site and I usually face the window. And I will read my passage of the Bible and sometimes I, that passage speaks to me, I dwell on it. Sometimes from there, I just allow myself to just drift, as it were, in the presence of God, you know. And I would, after a while, I hear him much better. After a while, if I have to make a very difficult decision, I don't make it when I'm tired, if I can. But of course, sometimes you can't help it, then you trust God to protect you. But if you can, try not to make an important decision when you're tired. And if you are tired, 
and you have to make a decision. One other way is to seek accountability. Check with a, a couple of brothers or sisters who say, look, I, I feel I need to do it. What do you think? And if they tell you that that's just a stupid idea, forget it. Okay, then don't do it. <laughs> All right? Okay? Because you'll probably regret it later on. But if I'm rested, emotionally, my tank is topped up. All right? You, you need to take care of your emotions. The soul, that's one aspect of your soul. Top up your tank, okay? One way to top up your tank is to have, um, is to have hobbies. Is it okay to have hobbies? It's okay to have hobbies, okay? Now, some people like gardening. If I do gardening, I'll be very stressed. Some people like to do cooking, fine. One of my fellow pastors, Pastor Joe, he loves to cook. When he's stressed, he cooks. So we always pray that he's, he's, he's always stressed, then he cook for us. Uh, my wife likes to watch Korean drama to unwind. I sometimes join her. These days, I appreciate a bit more. Initially, I, I really don't like to watch Korean drama. They always talk about relational problems. You know, oh, mother-in-law, daughter-in-law fight. La. Then husband and the brother fight. La. Then I watch halfway. It's like, wow, this one sounds like my church. Eh. <laughs> it's like, oh, yo, I already... Uh, my love, my love, enough. I, I like to watch, you know what? Sci-fi movie. Aliens. Wow, the aliens kill each other, you know. These are not my church members. I don't care. Uh. <laughs> not my problem. Uh. <laughs> you know, my wife very stressed out. And I say, Ayo, why fight, 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 fight? Okay, but I don't watch those that is very gory on. Uh. You know, some quite clean <laughs> sci-fi movies, clean action movies, 24 hours, you know, things like that. Like, they shoot, 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 but don't have blood, man. No? <laughs> that kind of thing, you know, and I find, okay, for me, it may not work for you, uh. So it could be uh, gardening, painting, cooking, sewing, whatever it is. Find one or two hobbies. All of us have. But you know what? We get so busy, we've got no time for hobbies. Can I say that's a mistake? Try to bring that back. All right? It may take some time and a bit of adjustment to your lifestyle. Husband and wife support each other. Support each other. All right? Um, because you need to refresh your soul. And your day off is where you can do some of these hobbies. Um, the day off is where you do things that top up your tank. I, my, I top up my tank. Actually, I like to travel. I like to see mountains and, and rivers and greeneries, but these days we can't travel. Okay? So in the past, twice a year, if I can, I travel. Sometimes it doesn't have to be very far, but if we can, we go a little bit further away. Um, Okay, I thank God. <laughs> Spending time with my wife is very uh, top up my tank. All right, she, uh, I mean, we have a good relationship. She's really my soulmate, and uh, she's a good listener. Truth is, I don't give her a chance to talk. So then she listen, listen, listen. I, I, say, I feel okay, I feel much better now. You know, uh, so whatever it works for you, all right, it means different things for different people. It is very, very important because when you do that. Your emotional tank is top up. So many of us, we are running at near empty, if not empty already. And you find yourself losing your temper quickly, grouchy, and these days, you know, depression, anxiety, all that is coming in more and more. All right? Of course, there could be other reasons, biological, medical reasons, but one of the biggest things that you and I can do is to top up our tank on a regular basis. Let me close with this thought. The Sabbath principle or the Shabbat is meant for men. Sabbath is made for men, not meant for Sabbath. God created us to function in rhythms, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. One of the most important is the weekly. And the weekly rhythm is six days work, one day rest. All right? Cease from doing anything that is for purpose of accomplishment. Do things that refreshes you. Rest your body. Top up your tank. Refresh your soul. Sp refresh your spirit as you connect with God um, uh, more through the word, through prayer, through worship, or through spiritual fellowship, through spiritual reading. There's so many pathways to God. If you do that on a weekly basis, maybe I ask the worship team, you can make your way up. If you do that on a weekly basis, I can guarantee you, not just from my own experience, from what I've understood from the Word of God, how He has created us. You see, it's, it's like I have a car 
and I have to send the car for regular maintenance. Every, what, 10,000 you have to send for maintenance. If I then send my car for maintenance, can I still drive my car? I can. 20,000 I can drive. But you know what? You can feel your car like very draggy, you know. It's not functioning at its maximum. And if I go any further, the whole thing might just break down. Same for us. Body, soul and spirit. Some of you are way overdue, all right, for a time of maintenance. <laughs> can you push yourself? Well, Singaporeans, we are very determined we can. But I can tell you, you are not functioning at your maximum. You're short fuse. <laughs> You lose your patience, you get discouraged, get depressed, a whole lot easier than if you are fresh, you are renewed, you are recharged. The problems may still be there, but you look at it now with your battery is, is a lot more topped up. The Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. God loves us. God created you and I. He knows our needs. He knows what we are made of. He gave us all the, the laws, the practices, not as prison bars to lock us in, but to be guidelines, to be pointers so that we can live a full and happy life and blessed life according to His timing, His rhythm, His purpose. And we apply that to every area of our lives, finance, work, your business, your relationships, your ministry, everything. And when you do that, you can function at your maximum potential. Not that there are no problems, not that there are no ups and downs, COVID-19, whatever, but you'll be a lot stronger. And even in difficult times, there's something within you that bubbles up. There's hope. And people ask you, what is their hope? This is a hope from Christ Jesus. This is a hope from the Holy, Holy Spirit. I, I can't describe to you what it is. I, I can't even put down on a piece of paper what is it. But I can tell you, I can tell you in my relationship with God, there is hope that rises up. Is everything going well? No, so many things is going wrong. But there's hope within me. That is the difference for somebody who has the Lord, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And who seeks to walk and live our lives in accordance to God's teaching and purpose and guidance, you function at your maximum. Can I have an amen for that? Let's all stand, please. Yeah. Can I just have a closing song and then, sorry, I'm taking a couple more minutes and uh, just a time to pray. Um, yeah. I love you, Lord. I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God
either, either on your hand or your neck. Maybe we can just quieten the music really soft, no drums and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Can you feel your pounds? Just yeah, just quieten down and feel the beating of your heart. And as you feel your pulse, I want you to tell yourself that every beat of my heart is a gift from God. Every breath that I can take, every heartbeat is from God. Because if my heart stops beating, I won't even be standing here. And as you feel your pulse and as you're being reminded that your very heartbeat, your very ability to breathe is a gift from God. It's a provision from our Heavenly Father. Because sometimes we forget, we take things for granted. And I believe God the Father wants to tell you that son, my daughter, I'm sustaining you. I will keep your heart beating. Some of you may be going through a difficult time, especially during this uncertain season. We need to remember the Lord of the Sabbath. Thank you, Jesus. And would you just take a moment now before I pass the mic back to Pastor Allen that you would just take the minute or next minute or two to just tell God that God, I want to live my life in accordance to the way you have created me. And today I, I'm reminded of practicing the Sabbath. Six days work, one day rest. Some of you, you have not rest for months, if not years. And just been pushing and pushing and perhaps really difficult times so don't beat yourself up either you know this is not the purpose of my message but I believe God wants to re lovingly remind you would you trust me? would you trust me that one day a week you will just unplug switch off your handphone switch off your computer if you have to resist from from, from going back to work or attending to this or that. Just waste the day away. It's okay. Do something that you enjoy. Spend time with people that tops up, who tops up your tank. Do something that reju refresh you. Pastor Ellen.